Oh man, I can't wait till I can take a break tonight. If you want to see the one hour long Cascade reaction video come out before BDSP, you guys need to hit the 250 likes on this video. What? What the f Oh. Oh, oh my, oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> it seems that you guys really wanted to get this one hour video, huh? Well, hi, I hope everyone's having a good day today. Today we're reacting to the one hour long plot video centered around the Cascade region. If you don't know, we have been reacting to the entirety of Loxton and Noggin's Cascade region series. And this is the second to last video that's currently out, but I guess the third to last because the next video that Loxton makes on this game will be the last one. Now, a lot of people have been telling me to avoid this video for uh, spoilers, but as I've said, I don't really care about spoilers anymore, considering the game is not coming out for another two to three years, probably minimum. Um, so I'm very excited to see exactly the plot around Cascade. I know this video is probably going to be very edited from him as well. So this is really going to be a very interesting hour. But before we begin, y'all know what's going on get your snacks right now i'm talking popcorn cheetos fr funyuns bro lays oots if you're that kind of person you know we don't judge out here get a drink you know what i'm talking maybe a blue raspberry slushy uh dr pepper you know peepus bro listen get yourself situated nice and comfy get your blanket on you know what i'm saying make sure the ac is on like 70 degrees you know not too cold not too hot you know what i'm saying and get yourself ready because this is going to be a long reaction and it is going to be fire so i hope y'all ready support the boy with a like and a sub put those notifications on so you don't miss an upload and now let's begin this video shall we let's do this man i <laughs> This has been a journey, man. This is this has really been a journey. I think I started this series when I had 1,000 subs. Now we're at 5.7. That's crazy, man. Time really flies, dude. I I'm sorry. We gotta we gotta be getting this already. All right, let's do this. Hey let's there. do this. We've been working on a Lockemon region. Lockemon just being what I call our fake mon for branding purposes or something. So now at this point, we've talked about the region itself, what inspired it, what mon live there, what inspired each of them, who the elite four and champion are, who yep. the gym leaders are and their gimmicks, and who the quote unquote evil organization is, and what their leaders' motivations are, and also what the main professor is doing, developing. Oh, I just realized now we. We are finally going to be able to see the legendary for real this time. That's not a spoiler. <laughs> That's going to be interesting. Type. And now that we've gotten this far with all of those ideas, now it's time to finally lay down the plot. So I sat down, wrote out a huge script, realized I didn't understand it. So I made it again, realized oh. halfway through it was still like, uh, how am I going to present this? So instead I sat down and yeah, I've, I've definitely experienced that before. And that's, that's for short videos, you know, like my 10 minute, 15 minute videos. I can't even imagine making a script for a one hour long video. That must, that must have been really intense, dude. Loxon really doesn't get as much support as he deserves for this kind of stuff made a bullet point list timeline thing with color coding so that I understood how everything flowed and like what the player knows and what the player doesn't know at the time and all this stuff and it, it really helped. I now know better world building techniques, which should also help with DMing D&D stuff. So if I were to write a Pokemon game with my ideas and this region in mind, how would I do it? While, while still trying to keep it, you know, like a Pokemon game to where it's not too different, but it's different enough that makes me happy. Now, Pokemon games aren't always known for having a deep and intricate plot. Some of them are more intense than others. That's true. And they still sometimes have their twists and turns, but rarely is that the focus. And typically major plot events are spread thin across the usual gym challenge plot line. So that is true. Pokemon, it's not known for their plot. They are pretty good though, in my opinion. I think they do a really good job at executing it um, to try to, you know, attract all different levels of age. 
Uh, as a kid, you know, I loved black and white story, but as I grew up, the more I found out just how dark some of the underlying elements really are. And I think that, that might be one of the reasons um, black and white and black and white two are like one of my favorite games, because if you're young, you like the game, you know, the stories are right. You really grow attached to the characters. But when you're older, you're like, dude, this dude gets this as a terrorist. You know what I mean? So I don't know. I, I really I like Pokemon's plot, but it definitely isn't anything uh, too crazy. That's for sure. So I'd like to emulate that while also making some changes that I personally would have wanted to see in a Pokemon game for a long time now. The okay. biggest change being who the player character is. Why be 10 to 12 again? No, I want responsibilities. Uh -oh. I'd be all happy and friendship based with a bunch of buddies that don't do anything besides smile and give you positive vibes. No, I want teen tier edge in my plot. Ooh. Not as much as, say, Pokemon Uranium, you gad, but uh, enough for, say, like an E10 rating. Now, let's see. I've struggled with how to present this. Do I go Pokemon Cardinal style with plenty of voiceover? Or just, like, have me going and explaining everything as, like, a narrator? Maybe an in-between? Well, let's just start and see what happens. All right, <laughs> let's start this, we shall. Hey, exciting news, remember this? The Toefrog plush, it's my favorite lock Stop in it. as a plush. Well, here is the final factory version. No! It's sort of a dream come true to be making plushies for real now. <sighs> it's a frog masquerading. I can't do this no more, man. This hurt in my heart. <laughs> it's a block of tofu. You know what? I'm, I'm going to skip this. You know, I can't do this, bro. I'm skipping this, yo. All right, all right, all right. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Go through the timeline. Well, I guess this video is entirely spoilers anyway. Though That's there's a true. Good chance not all of these ideas will make it in, and some things may change. We've already made tons of changes to stuff in the game. That's also another valid reason why I'm reacting to this. Not only because I feel like I will forget the most important parts of the plot by the time I play through the fan game, but because a lot of things that I've seen locks in sort of make will definitely get adjusted and changed. So I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of even plot points um, get adjusted or even completely revamped in the final product. So, dude, we got, we got a lot in the store, man. You know in what I'm saying? To the videos, things like Alfalfa Lops now is grass rock type for the oh, sake okay. of balancing. I like and that. Some got their names changed. Like Kunsum is now Raskum. It gets rid of the slur that I wasn't aware of being a slur. Why are there so many slurs? Just be nice people. So, uh, yeah, let's break this video into chapters, timestamps on screen, and just go through the goings on of this game concept. All right. Uh... Chapter one, the ancient history. Ooh. In the beginning, chapters. Arceus and company create the world out from Spear Pillar. Primal Groudon and Regigigas travel west, creating the old world continents occasionally getting in kerfuffles with Kyogre, these kerfuffles being why they traveled west instead of east, and is also the source of the Indian Ocean. While finishing up the western end of the continents, there's yet another major conflict with Primal Kyogre, who now seems to be winning. This is when the mysterious ancient Great Thunderbird steps in to help Groudon, giving Ooh. it the energy to avoid Kyogre and begin a new set of continents the New World Continents. Oh, and so you know, this has taken like a billion years. The new continents are being formed and Groudon gets tired again, but the bird commands and directs it to continue at least for a little while longer. Eventually, there is another fight with Kyogre right at the end. The Thunderbird helps, but ultimately, Kyogre wins. And what would eventually be known as the Cascade region. Bro, this sucker Groudon sucks, bro. Not only did he, <laughs> he need assistance, he still lost. Come on, bro. You had an electric type help in you. What you mean you lost? One of the last bits of land to be formed on the continent, reflecting the real world Northwest coast. Groudon and the bird part ways and rest. Groudon goes to Hoenn and the bird remains here in Proto Cascade. Ancient life begins flourishing across the world, as what we now call fossil Pokemon roam the land. About 50 million years ago, a wandering Manadza discovers the Cascade region and decides to settle, calling it home and causing an eternal summer. The only time the region has a chance to cool off is when it's sleeping, but it still can't cool off to the point of it being winter. The great ancient Thunderbird is not a fan of this heat, so it wakes up and begins wandering around the continents once more. Eventually, Manadza needs to hibernate for hundreds of eons, which Ooh. lets the region balance out a bit. 
But then, about three million years ago, while Manadza is hibernating, the wandering Arctical, which is our new name for Arcto Yield, because I merely settled on the name Arcto oh. Yield and I wasn't a huge fan of it, and Arctical is a lot cooler in my opinion, but let me know in the comments which you prefer. Anyway, Arctical wanders in and begins an ice age, forcing most of the Pokemon living there to flee or die in this frigid wasteland. About 30,000 years ago, humans first arrived in the region and began to settle, slowly going from hunter-gatherers to an agricultural society. This shift in the natural way, this disturbance, awakens Manadza, who returns its part of the region to a hot summer. And the Manadza versus Arctical rivalry begins. They create <laughs> Tamunk and Temunk as scouts. And when they do eventually meet the great ancient Thunderbird, they immediately recognize its authority. Also, Wikoot is here now, but nobody knows when, where, or why. I still really like that, uh, that legendary, it's so cool. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice backstory, or I guess not a backstory, but just some history, I guess, is more accurate to say uh, on the legendaries and also the, the world of Pokemon itself and how things sort of happened. Uh, I like this. This is very nice. <laughs> this is very nice. All right. It showed up. It's just a crazy old coot. At least it's wise. Nobody really likes him, though. A little trickster. About 28,000 years ago, this rivalry leads to a giant heat wave, followed immediately by another great ice age, which devastates the region and the humans living there. The forest in the southeastern part of the region completely dies and desertifies, total destruction, which is then only halted by the once again awoken Great Thunderbird. Wikut, not a fan of this, summons all of the legendaries, and they settle on rapidly rotating seasons. A compromise. The box legendaries still bump heads occasionally, which necessitates Wikut to negotiate a ceasefire or for the Thunderbird to step in and forcibly demand one. But doing this takes its toll as the bird still hasn't fully recovered from its creation days. The ancient great huh. Thunderbird needs more rest. Eventually, humans move back in, and about 8,000 years ago, a mysterious cataclysm occurs. Mysterious beings from another world invade and are tormenting the villages oh, the across beasts. the region. A great hero summons Wikut to Mount Anil with a mysterious flute and asks for help. The wise Wikut always knows where the other legendaries are with its wisdom, and it summons them to help fight off the invaders. The Great Thunderbird fights off the majority of them with its immense power and even commands some to leave. And they listen, but ultimately, not yet fully recovered from its altercations with Primal Kyogre and all of its previous interactions with Manadza and Arctical, it dies in the Damn. process. The humans build a temple to the Great Thunderbird deep in the mountain in memoriam of this event, and they build a relic key out of its remains. I mean, he couldn't even be the Kyogre with the help of a Groudon. I mean, it's not really, you know, too surprising. I mean, I mean I'm sorry. I just have to be the one to say it. And life goes on. That was intense. Chapter two, modern but pre-player history. Okay. The rivalry between the box legendaries isn't gone completely, but it has died down since the Thunderbird's passing. They've still butted heads a few times, but Wikut is always able to mitigate the damage and break them up. The human population keeps growing, and their villages continue expanding slowly but surely, and this goes on for thousands of years, until around the year 1600, foreign humans start to move into the region. Some of them occasionally seeing these legendaries and reporting back tales of a more mysterious cryptid Pokemon to their homelands around 18. So something I'm kind of curious about, like we saw that character earlier with the flute that was a silhouette as well. And we do know, like, I know there's Ultra Beast, so I'm pretty sure those uh, things that came out of the portal were Ultra Beasts. What exactly are these silhouettes? Are we going to actually see them as full fledged, like fleshed out characters? 
I want to see how he's going to maintain it because I don't know if he got art just for this specific thing or we're going to see them or not. I don't know, but they they look very interesting, especially that flu guy with the Wicoot. I feel like he might uh he might have the Wicoot. I don't know. We, we, I'm talking too much, bro. Listen. <laughs> foreign humans take over the area, huge swaths of them, and they alter the landscape dramatically with their dams, cities, and gold mining operations. The modern region begins to take shape. Here we go. In the 1980s, a young Tom Bezel is dating the soon-to-be a professor, Menzi, and is frat baits with the soon-to-be professor, <laughs> Fur, baits. at Cascade University. In the 90s, the now-single Tom Bezel creates the first <laughs> widely successful website, Gumei's Search, a search engine. He sees this new internet thing as an amazing tool to help people learn and stay connected with everyone, so he eventually also creates Face Dex, the first widely successful social network. He oh, you know, sounds kind of familiar. Hmm. I don't know, but just a hunch only though. He wants to improve the world and learns through data collection that he can help people all the more by providing a storefront with targeted advertising. And so he creates Amazol to conglomerate all of his sites and properties. Eventually, Amazol becomes just the way of life in the Cascade region, as it continues to grow and expand, eventually starting to reach other regions. By this time, sightings of the box legendaries are far and few between, and many question whether or not they even exist. Sometime in the 2000s, the player character is born, and they spend their whole life surrounded by Amazol tech, as it's the new normal for the region. All right, who y'all choosing? Okay, first of all, someone's like vacuuming or the freaking leaf blowing outside or something. I don't know, but <laughs> I don't know if I'm like it enough. But who y'all choosing, Lark or Ren? I don't like the way Lark be looking at me, bro. He looking too smug. I'm I'm a Ren player for life. I really like that design with the freaking beanie, dude. I love striped yellow hair. Oh, I love that. Oh, it's so cool. Also during this decade, Amazol is continuing to expand at an exponential speed. The bigger they grow, the faster they grow, globally even. And they continue to succeed at their goals, to give people what they want, to build infrastructure, to create jobs, to connect people, and to give people more access to information. They even start investing in smaller local businesses like Starbus, which eventually becomes <laughs> the world's largest coffee shop thanks to Amazol's funding. And they start importing coffee beans like crazy. There's also Mega, a taxi service with independent contractors instead of employees. And of course, Amazol eventually buys them both up entirely. Towards the end of the 2000s, Orbithalods start appearing in the region. Wait, what do you mean appearing? They've always been here. There's, there's no evidence or fossil record of them always being here. Well, they have no bones. I for one love how every important person seems to have an Orbithalod. I just think they're neat. In the oh, 2010s, okay. Amazol introduces the Pori Watch and buys up other tech manufacturers and gets into satellite and cell phone infrastructure and manufacturing. Data collection has never been higher, thanks to controlling most of the cell and data towers and satellites, as well as routers and browsers. They start making their own Lockemon too. Amazol branded Driftblim to help deliver packages. Botniak to gather data. Botniak. Amazol branded Sudowoodo to help redirect calls and gather data, and Vibat to go to where there isn't much technology and gather data. It's awesome. Meanwhile, Professor Fur begins work on his cast form project, and Professor Menzi is continuing her archaeological digs. Now as for the player characters, for the sake of this video, we're going to use Ren as the player and Lark as the rival. Let's go! Also, they're both named after birds. Oh. They live here. Local families of birds. Because birds tend to symbolize freedom, you know? It's a theme, trust me. So, Lark the rival, is fresh out of school and gets hired at a maze hall and is extremely grateful as it lifts him out of poverty. Meanwhile, Ren is just staying at home in her small town and now... Alright, so the kid that works at like the biggest company of all time and we just chilling at home, but listen, we about to go on our journey, know what I'm saying? Yeah, we, go about to, we about to start robbing suckers. We about to start robbing children, taking their money and we go get our bag up. Trust. Listen, we don't gotta work at a maze hall to get the bag up. Don't get, don't get don't get your funny up, get your money up, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's the early 2020s, and just before the start of the game, Amazol is finishing their development of the Amazeball PokeCloud system, giving trainers in the region access to the PC wherever they are. And they are currently developing a whole new Porygon evolution for Porygon 2, for use in the eventual Porywatch 3. They okay. are also developing more advanced Rotom technology, and top secretly, 
they've been working on the development of an artificial Thunderbird to give to their sponsored brand ambassador, Champion Yazin. Oh. It's, it's just something to look cool, really, and symbolize their region's unique history and folklore. It's just for spectacle. The hard thing is giving it enough power to be able to move and do Pokemon things. But that's not all. Amazol is also researching crop development. They've recently learned that they could increase crop yields dramatically just by tweaking the seasonal shifts slightly. They just need to slow down the monthly seasonal changes by about a week. Then their crop profits would explode. And they then could help feed more of the hungry. But will they? No. Meanwhile, on one of her digs, Menzi learns of a relic that supposedly can open some undiscovered ruins. She now knows what it looks like thanks to depictions, and that it has something to do with the box legendaries, but has no idea where it could be. But through data tracking, Amazol learns all of this too, and looks through their database and discovers that a small antique curio shop in Shakeland seems to have something that very well could be it. And uh -oh. they send out Lark to buy it as soon as possible. He isn't told what it does, but just that it's pricelessly valuable. Wait, so didn't Lark just get this job? <laughs> Wait, is, this is not so a little funky. First of all, this kid just get a, gets a job in Amazon. I mean, Amazol. And Jeff Bezos, I mean, Tom Bezel himself sends this random, like, probably bottom of the barrel kid to pick up something priceless? Wouldn't y'all expect them to send someone that's like really high up on the ladder to pick it up? Maybe I'm overthinking, and I know I am, but I don't Lark? Lark, bro. Y'all chose someone named Lark to pick it up. You know what? Listen. Its importance <laughs> is immeasurable. And so, he goes. And he messes up. I'm Chapter 3, and the game starts here. So who are you? You are either Ren or Lark, and for this video, you are Ren. Lark. You weren't some child prodigy able to become champion as a child. No, you were just an everyday person. Now 22, hey! your experience with Pokemon is positive. Damn, why am I so old? Anyways, 22 artists. <laughs> artists, listen, y'all yeah, got your confirmation. I'm not, Listen, I'm not saying nothing, but I know y'all hearing me. I, I know y'all hearing me. Hey, artists, do your thing. I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I'm, I'm just saying. Though a bit limited. <laughs> your mom has a tow frog that you help train and take care of, but that's about it. Wanting to help with the bills and have something to do with your life, you get a job as the professor's assistant, as there isn't really much else in this small town of Shakeland. And also the professor happens to be a friend of your mom's. Professor Fur has been studying the- Hey, what you mean by that? If you, if you don't get yo, you know what? Listen, I'll let you slide, but you better stay away from my mom. <laughs> you better the stay away. Found in the Cascade region, which makes the seasons rotate in each quadrant monthly and makes the Pokemon here more empowered with local weather anomaly control. There are unique sorts of weather and weather-like anomalies that are only found in this region. And some parts of the region are just locked in their season for no discernible reason. On top of that, the weather has seemingly been getting more extreme. Plus, first and leads to finish his cast form project, there's only a few more to go. So, Professor Fur needs all of the help he can get. For a part of his research, he needs you to go down into the forest to the south and pick up a fern, but recognizes that the wild Pokémon in the area have been acting a bit strange lately, so you better take one of these starter Pokémon, just as some added security. The choice is yours. For the sake of this video, let's go with Thurple. When you arrive back at the lab, you- I wish he chose the water one, but you know, I'll be- I'm fine with Thurple, you know, I'm fine with it. <laughs> Lark, who you don't know yet, Lark. peeking into the lab's window, just like the rival in Pokemon Gold and Silver. He looks like he'd be peeking into a window. I'm onto you, Lark. I don't trust you, kid. <laughs> but he runs off before you can confront him. Strange. Now inside, there's some little kid talking to the professor, and he chooses the weaker starter. Who so is Wampus, this guy? And the professor gives you some Pokeballs to teach him how to go catch Pokemon. So in this game, the catching tutorial is framed as you showing a kid how to do it. I love this idea. It turns out the kid's name is Jay, and gosh does he love Pokemon, and is just excited to start his own adventure. He just turned 10, you see. After he heads off- 
Oh my gosh. No. <laughs> he looks like a 10 year old. I feel like sometimes the 10 year olds in Pokemon look like they're 15 or something. He looks like a child and I want to beat him up. I mean, uh, um, take his money. I mean, <laughs> listen. His adventure, you return to the lab and the professor now has a big job for you. Ren, he says. I don't I trust you. you to deliver a package for me on the other side of Cascade to <laughs> Professor Menzi. There's no rush with this package at all, but its security is incredibly important. I've already had some young guy try to buy it off of me just after I picked it up from that curio shop. It's far too priceless, and at this point, there's no one I would trust less to deliver it than Amazal, or no one I would trust more than you. Oh. Uh, besides, I know you've been getting interested Wait. in the gym challenge. Wait, Wait, I'm on to you, Pro not give that Wait, I did thought I paused. Let me, let me go back a bit. I'm on to you, Professor Fur. Listen, no, this ain't no important pack. It's just guy wants me to get away from my mom. No. Hey, dude, I'll tell you, this dude think he's slick. What do you mean you close friends with my mom? Listen, buddy, you better watch yourself, bro. If I find out anything happens, listen. <laughs> Amazal ain't the only thing going down, buddy. I'm just, I'm just Besides, saying. Listen. I know you've been getting interested in the gym challenge lately, so why not give that a shot while you're on your way? He's solid. This, this dude is really solid. That's crazy. He's really trying to get me away from the house, bro. I'm finna come back and this is gonna be my new stepdad, and I ain't gonna be happy at all, bro. Leave me alone. And so the journey begins. Dude. Your mom gives you a brand new Pori Watch 2 as a gift for your upcoming adventure, and my. Much like most Mon games, nothing major really happens at first. Standard routes and NPCs, plenty of world building if you choose to talk to everyone. Before reaching Chapanook City, you bump into Jay, the friendly rival who has caught some Route 1 Mon and challenges you. And after the battle, you get a call from the professor. The third starter has been stolen. Wow. <laughs> have listened to your mom and gotten that security system. I just don't like the idea of a Maisal having eyes in here too, you know? It wouldn't have mattered. Trust him. Yeah, I mean, he works for a Maisal, so you would have gotten it anyways. <laughs> but, uh, so that means he has bu bubble roll, right? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'd have the water one. No! Y'all can't give the best starter to him! Oh my gosh. <laughs> just keep your eyes open for a burb world. They are super rare, so it shouldn't be difficult. And so you enter Chapanook City. The vibe is very positive. It's currently getting a load of infrastructure upgrades to compete with Port Alki, the major city to the north, and a lot of this is being built by a Maisal. You see occasional delivery drift limbs and workers out and about. You had no idea just how big the corporation had gotten these last few years until now. It's a bit scary, but the convenience of two-day deliveries and all of their mobile devices and watches? Face decks, gumes, they make so many lives so much better and so much more convenient. So cool. And it all started right here in Cascade. And only a few years before you were born. What an honor to be born here. They've been around your entire life and it's hard to imagine a world without them. I feel like I'm getting brainwashed, dude. Plus, with a peak member subscription, you get access to the Pokemon Cloud and can even order items from your watch. It's amazing. Now, even though the gym is currently under construction, the leader still accepts your challenge and you prevail. Talk about a confidence boost. Maybe Easy. you have some training talent. Badge in hand, you attempt to leave Chapanook to the east as the northern bridge is under construction. And you bump into that guy who was staring into the window. He introduces himself as Lark and Lark. offers you a bunch of Poké Dollars for your package. After refusing... What? Refusing? Listen, all right, whoever's developing, I, I forgot the names, whoever's developing these fan games, I, I, I humbly request you add an option where I just sell the package and I get the bad ending. Because <laughs> I, I would do that, dude. I would high key be like, wait, you, you're paying me how much? Listen, bro. I'm finna take that cash, move me and my mom to Unova, and then I'm gonna live there. Listen, I, you gotta get your bread up, dude. I ain't, I ain't playing no games. <laughs> I'd love you that. That'd be cool. Well, I'm not above taking it. And you discover he stole the burb world.
Oh, wow. You beat him. And continuing on, there's a wild area, or just a big route with many branching paths. Nothing matters to the plot here other than a load of faux tree cell towers being put up by a Mazol. And as sort of expected, the closer and closer you get to Solo Falls, the next town, the denser they seem to be placed together. At this town, you learn of surrounding dungeons with different sorts of mon in them. And you also learn that the mountain it's right next to is a mystical mountain, Mount Spectol. People from all over the world come here to meditate. It seems to make opening your mind and soul a lot easier, simplifying the finding yourself process of meditation. There's lots Damn. of hippies in the area camping. And also while here, you successfully defeat the second gym leader. Yay! As you head towards the <laughs> Mount Spectral Tunnel, you see Lark and Jay talking. Lark seems annoyed. But our eyes locked! That means we have to battle! Sorry, Snotty. I, I don't have time. He turns to you. I have to... Uh, 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 and he battles Jay, allowing you to sneak past into the tunnel. Easy. While in the tunnel, which is illuminated by glowing magical... Yo, I'm praying, you, I'm praying for my boy Jay. Listen, I may be stealing your money after you're done beating Lark. But you better, you better get your bread up, bro. Listen, we, we don't stand Lark in this household, all right? <laughs> you catch a slight glimpse of Cascadian Deonce. Huh? How pretty. There's also a few amaze all scientists with some machines doing some research, I guess. Eh, how not pretty. And out on the other side of the tunnel, there is another big open space area, or just a bunch of open-ended routes. You bump into some Amazol delivery folks on break who want to unwind with a battle, and you also find some Amazol contractors putting up more cell towers. In the desert? Eh, either way, they say you're trespassing on Amazol property, so they battle you. Eventually, Lark runs up to you from behind, who, panting, challenges you for the package with the item inside. Oh once my again. gosh. And you beat him again. Meanwhile, at some point in this part of the story, and unknown to the player, Professor Fur finishes his steel-type cast form, which is capable of nullifying all weather effects when it's brought onto the battlefield, oh. and Amazol buys it off of him. Somewhere in this large area... So, the... <laughs> Wait, hold on. So, I remember in that video, Professor Fur was... He got swayed by the money, right? He didn't want to sell that thing because he knew just how abusive to cast form it really was but he ended up succumbing to the cash but he couldn't succumb to the cash to sell the package listen i don't think professor fur truly knows the impact of that package whatever it may be whatever correlation to the legendary may have he probably just has a hunch that it's important but he rather abuse pokemon and get his bread than sell some item and get his bread listen professor fur First up, my mom, now you abusing Pokemon? Listen, listen, all right? I ain't gonna continue, but y'all know what I'm, y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all can hear what I'm saying. We need to, we need to get this man out of here. <laughs> ...is Bent Town, a once prosperous town whose economy collapsed, but is now being built back up thanks to an Amazol factory and warehouse set up by the gym leader himself. And after you get his badge, he tells you, if you haven't already, you should check out the Geyser History Museum to the southeast. When you do, you learn plenty of Cascadian history. You learn about the Fossilmon and can even buy a fossil if you can afford it. Maybe after playing Ooh. at Benthown's Casino, hmm? You also learn a lot about the history of the region itself. A lot of the stuff in the Ancient History chapter of this video, but not all of it. While out and about in the desert, you run into Champion Zin relaxing in the Ooh. sun, and his assistant is with him. <laughs> Hey, assistant, fellas, maybe a maze all ain't so bad after all. Dina, hold on a minute. Hey, hey, wozers. Before you can talk to him, though, Jay runs up. Hey, Wen, I beat this guy with dumb hair and a bird whirl. I think I have enough experience to beat you, too. And he Steals challenges money. you. You win, of course. And Champion Zin, who was watching, congratulates you both on a well-fought battle, giving you both a signed photograph of himself <laughs> in a wow. wildly sultry pose. And then he leaves. And now back to the routes. More landmarks with different things in them to catch different mons. And another lark battle at Gorge Outpost. It looks like he's talking to some Amazol contractors who are working on another canyon bridge. Uh, oh, them? I was, uh, renewing my peak membership. Yeah. Uh, hey, this bridge is a good spot for a battle. I will get that package from you. At if I, I still can't possibly fathom the, the thought process behind this. Again, I get it. At this point, whatever. You know, this guy's chasing me down to get the package. But 
This is freaking Tom Bezel, bro. This dude has the most money in the world. Can he not afford to just send like a group of people to come beat us up? <laughs> if the package is that important, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. There's a little bit of conflicting mindsets here. I feel like Tom Bezel's definitely smart enough to do something like that. Uh, that's probably my only issue. And I know that's kind of petty. It's Pokemon. It's supposed the plot's supposed to be a little weird like that sometimes, anyways. But hey, man. Listen, I'm still allowed to voice my opinion, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> At this point, his burb world has evolved. And just before so he throws cool. out his last mon, he says, yeah, I know I'm not supposed to use you, but... And he throws out a bot map. <laughs> the gym leader at this outpost saw the battle and now challenges you too. And you get another badge. Hey. And access to another quadrant. This is where we'll find Professor Menzies' lab. Here we go. Plot time. Chapter 4, The Amazal Raid, <gasps> and the second half of the game. What a chapter name. At the lab, you meet Professor Menzi. She's hard to get a hold of because she doesn't have a phone and barely has a computer. She's very stubborn and into her ways. But you deliver the thing, and she also gives her quail your scent. So that you can communicate now. Via carrier pigeon. B but it's a quail. And you still don't <laughs> know what's in the box. I'll get to it when I get to it. Go challenge more gyms or whatever you kids do these days. Oh well, there's two more gyms here and a small town with a farmer's market and state fair. People sell many unique and handmade things here, though they mention that they have to sell a lot of them on Amazal's store these days, who of course take a cut of the profit. Oh well, badge five and six get. And a message via carrier pigeon. Get, it's time to see Professor Menzi again. I, I don't know if I commented on this before when we <clears throat> first saw the gym leaders, bro, but that dude's nose is huge. <laughs> on the way, it's Rival again, hanging out with more Amazal contractors, installing more cell towers. He's nervous looking and tries to act all strong and not nervous as he challenges you again. Rip you. Now with a fully oh, evolved starter. It's so After cool. losing, he's trying really hard to play it cool and is not really working and he bolts off on a drift blim after nervously laughing. Uh, well, you reach Menzi's lab. Her Pokemon are frantically looking around the lab for something. Her war cane is very clumsy about it. Oh good, you're here! Well, I've lost the relic Fur sent me. Oh nice. Unfortunately, it's incredibly important and I understand why he sent you to deliver it. It was a key of sorts. A key into the ruins I recently found under Mount Anil. I heard some rustling around, and I worry that someone may have taken it, but the thing is, I make sure almost nobody knows where I am. How could they have known where to look? Hmm, I can't be positive if someone stole it without evidence, though. Did you happen to see any suspicious figures? A weird boy that seems <laughs> to be following you? Floated away on a drift limb? Had some sort of robot cat with him? Why does that sound suspicious? Can you get a hold of Professor Fur on that wrist thing of yours uh robotic cat pokemon only amaze all workers have those and mainly the top ones in port alki so whatever amaze all is doing with that can't be good absolutely not <sighs> well ren i guess it's time i told you why i don't really like amaze all oh wow Angel tells you about their shared <clears throat> past together and all of Amazal's current ethically questionable Pokemon experimentation and worker overworking. And that it's spooky that they control nearly three quarters of Cascade's economy and nearly an eighth of the world's. See, like, I, I would side with you, Professor Fur, but I, I still, I don't know. I can't let it slide with what you did with that cast form. He didn't deserve it, man. I'm just saying. No one should have that much power. If you're so against them, then why do you have that Pori watch? I'm just saying, though, he's, he said no one has that power. It sounds to me like Professor Fur might be a little jealous, you know? He don't got that bag, so, you know, he's a he's a bread hater, you know what I'm saying? I'm, hey, man, I'm just here delivering the news. I ain't making it, so I'm just saying, I'm on I'm on Tom Bezel's side so far, listen. It's like three for Tom Bezel, and he ain't even here, so, hey, I'm just saying. Uh, unfortunately, it's hard to lead a normal life without their tech. Mm -hmm. But regardless, all of the scandals as of late, working with overseas mafia types, Pokemon experimentation, the fines they get when they're caught are just slaps on the wrist to them. All I'm saying is, whatever they want with that relic, uh, it can't be good. We need to get that relic back. 
And it's not like we can just report this to the authorities. Who do you think funds them? What? Wiggles. You think it was that suspicious boy? You've already beaten him a few times. <gasps> Wait! Bye, Professor. I'll send Quailey Poo your way. What? What are you? And your Pori watch is no more. She explains that a Mazol could be listening through it, and this plan needs to be kept a secret. Okay. She hands you a large notebook filled with tape and sticky notes, which will serve as your temporary Pokedex. Nice. Thankfully, it's already filled with lots of her own notes on Pokemon, which hey. just so happened to be exactly what you had on your Pokedex. Talk about a coincidence. I know. Uh, fourth wall break time. Functionally, it's just a texture change for the Pokedex, but you still have full Pokedex functionality. Menzi tells you that you need to get to Amazol HQ as fast as possible, and while not being tracked by your watch. You need to catch up with that Lark fellow and get the relic back. And so, off you go to the next area, right on Menzi's speedy war cane. And on the way, you catch a glimpse of a box legendary on the mountain in the not too <gasps> distance. How cool. War cane drops you off at a manhole cover next to a maze all HQ, and you sneak. Oh my gosh. HQ. Apparently, their automated security kinda sucks if you don't have any of their trackable tech on you. But there are, of course, guards that you beat, and then they let you through because it's a Pokemon game. They have lots of Vibat, Botniak, Amazol Driftblim and Pseudowoodos, and Porygons, and Rotoms. And soon you see Lark enter an elevator with the package, and you give chase via the stairs, as the elevator requires a key card. You fight a few more guards and employees on various floors, and some of the scientists have steel-type cast forms. I wonder where they got that oh. from. Well, you eventually learn by beating up the guards that Lark is likely going to see the CEO, and he always stops at the break room before doing so. At the break room floor, you see him fixing his hair in the mirror and making sure his clothes look nice. Time to surprise him, and time for one more battle. I, I can't give you the relic, I need to show Mr. Bezel- Ooh, I oh, didn't I'm mean to do that. It. Big boss battle, rival battle time thing. Wow. He's got a big team of powerful Mon. Vaquameo, Metagross, Ooh. Porygon Ooh. Omega, Rotom in the form that okay. is best against your team composition, and a supercharged Botniak. Though you, of course, still beat him. And while crying, he throws out his last Pokemon, a level six Padet. Who uh -oh. you have no problem defeating in a single attack. You take back the relic and his key card and enter the elevator to leave. But it would seem the elevator has been taken over by a Rotom and it's taking you up instead of down. It opens on the top floor. It's dark. But you can see in the soft spotlight Tom Bezel at his desk. Suddenly, something dark and fast streaks by and takes the relic from your hands. You oh. just make out that it might have been an Orbithalod. And just to the side of you, you see some large humming machine, a large cloth draped over most of it. But you can make <laughs> out that the bottom of it appears to be some sort of metal claw. I see you've made it, he says. You know. It was a smart move, breaking that watch. Bro, this feels like I'm about to get bodied, bro. Yo, this atmosphere is spooky, bro. Am I fighting Lex Luthor or Tom Bessel, bro? What is going on? The next model is just about to be revealed. I can even give you one now if you'd like. You've proven yourself more than worthy of it. You know, it took nearly 20 years to perfect this one. The Pori Watch Omega. Oh no. It turns out all we needed was some patented tech from Rotomoto Co. <laughs> Rotom you know, the makers of the Rotom phone. So, a few calls later, we acquired them and merged their technology into ours. And now, the ultimate model of smartwatch is here. Each one featuring an all new Porygon Omega. <sighs> here. Porygon, enable all privacy options. Boop. Complete. There. You know, every model has always had the option to turn tracking, message reading, and data collection off. You just had to disable it in the settings. It's entirely voluntary. I'd never strip a human of their beloved privacy against their wishes. That'd make me a monster. I don't trust them. Yeah, I, I don't trust them. I, I feel like he's so stupid. <laughs> Orb the Lod approaches Tom from the darkness and hands him the box with Thing the relic. scary. It just so happens most folks are willing to trade privacy for convenience, a trade I'll happily provide them, since it leads to more customer satisfaction. <laughs> Sad. 
angry. And I see you're unsatisfied at the moment. So please, accept my apology. I had no idea the young man I sent out to find this relic would resort to thievery. The gall of some people. Here. He walks up to you and hands you the relic and a new Pori Watch Omega, which you put on. I mean, it's so nice. You love a Mazel tech. And he turned off all of the tracking for you. This relic isn't worth the damage to my reputation this has caused you. I'll see to it that Lark is reprimanded. I don't know. I don't feel like this is the correct relic, dude. I don't know. Maybe he gave us a fake? Yo, listen, you can keep the relic. Just give me a bag. I'm just saying like a million? A million stuff for you? Maybe two million. Two million. Yeah, two million. I, I, I'll let you outside two million uh, real dollars, which I guess is like, what, 20 million pokey dollars or 200 million? That's nothing to you, bro. Just slide me the dough. I'll be on my merry way. Uh, I'm going to Unova. Might even take a nice little trip to Kalos. You know what I'm saying? Okay, listen, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm so stupid, dude. In fact, would you like his position? Six figures. Done. Let's do it. Uh, let's get it over with, bro. We bag chasing out here. <laughs> Very well. Disappointing. The offer will always be open to you if you wish. And I'm dreadfully sorry that we had to meet under these circumstances. And so, you leave. Just outside of the tower, you see Professor Fur coming out of Omega. He tells you that the bridge to the south has finally been finished. And he's here to help. But he sees that you've already finished. You confront him about selling the steel cast form device, and he explains why and all that. Amazol offered him more funding than grants would ever provide. SMH. And sometimes you have to bend your morals a bit. Oh and gosh. he understands that someone as young as you might not understand. You give him the relic to take back to me. No, listen. I understand selling for the bread. I'm just saying you should have sold the relic too at that rate. You know how much bread you'd be swimming in? Yeah, I'm just saying. And continue on your gym challenge journey. Port Alki is a huge and advanced city. It and the surrounding routes are filled with more world building, and there's some sort of greenhouse lab right in front of the headquarters. You learn that it's a facility studying plants, crops especially, and the effect of different weathers on them. How curious. Exploring the city more, there's your classic, the end is nigh, sign holding guy. Speaking to him results in no words other than endrum or die. Whatever that means. Uh-oh. Weirdo. If you pester him enough, though, he'll battle you with an Orbthalod and Falaming. You also now have access to leave the city. Ooh, I don't know, dude. Those Mons. Those are some Mons. <clears throat> I'm just saying. And go to the third wild area and or area that's a bunch of open-ended routes. Nice. Eventually, you face the seventh gym. Hey. hey. Then you track down the eighth gym leader in an old abandoned gym and learn that his gym is moving to an all new building built by- We're only halfway through. Huh, damn, something crazy is about to happen. Amaze all. A bit unfortunate, but I need their funding to survive these days. At least this new gym is way hip, all the latest in gym technology. But all that still doesn't stop me from reminiscing about this one. Oh well. And then BAM! Eight badges. The League? We'll have to wait, though. A poster out in front of the League Tower says that they aren't accepting new challengers at the moment, as they are currently setting up an International Elite Four exchange event. How exciting. After reading this poster, Jay walks up to you for another fight. He has seven badges. Damn! And is just looking to track down the Eighth Leader. You tell him where to find the Eighth Leader after the battle, and he thanks you and is off. Oh? A message from Professor Menzi. Meet her at her dig site at the base of Mount Anil, back in the desert. Ghost Doggo! By a ghost town. Fun. Ghost now, Doggo! With this information, the pathway to the ghost town is mysteriously there. Passing by where that pathway is before would result in the pathway not being there at all. How eerie. This old western mining ghost town has a lot of archaeology equipment all around. Makes sense. That's Professor Menzi's specialty. Now inside of the spooky mines, you find an archaeological dig site where there appears to be an ancient mysterious door recently uncovered with depictions of the box legendaries and a huge pointy bird that clearly <laughs> isn't Zapdos. This is... the rest of the story. And Menzi explains the rest of the legendary lore that wasn't at the museum. She also mentions that she doesn't like how the Great Bird of Thunder appears to have fallen. Well then, we'll have to learn the details deeper in these ruins. 
I just wanted you here with me in case I run into trouble down here. Are you ready? I'm just saying that we definitely should not have taken that Omega wash. I have terrible, a terrible, terrible, terrible feeling about it. I think we may have screwed ourselves over a bit. And she puts the relic in the slot by the door and the door opens. Inside, the air is cursed. And wild Pokemon are unlike any you've seen on the surface. Sigilyph, Claydol, Cascadian Golet. What? And at its deepest point, even an occasional unknown. And at the end, a huge Golgur standing guard in front of something, and a boss battle takes place. It's functionally a totem Pokemon, which summons Cascadian Golet. <laughs> Upon victory, you see what it was guarding. A flute of some sort? <gasps> The Wakoot! <laughs> it's oddly difficult to make out its details, and touching it feels like a heavy burden. Menzi takes it and looks at the murals on the walls here. She learns that this flute can summon the mythical Wakoot, but only when blown at the right time and place. And that Wakoot, with its wisdom, is able to settle the differences between the box legendaries, which is precisely what it did when it was summoned by an ancient hero on top of Mount Anil. To help with. help. With, uh oh. Uh, you can't quite make it out. The great Thunderbird fell after fighting off the. Is that demon you thing here? Nor the professor can make out what this part of the mural looks like. The wall is like a cloudy jumbled swirly mess as if you physically cannot comprehend it there's huh. some weird energy it's giving off i'd comprehend it but i'm just that guy what can, what can i say menzi warily approaches the wall to make a rubbing sketch of it shaking the whole time one stroke reveals unseen details you couldn't see before pause and menzi faints but it's up for a safe landing by her war cane, who then barks at you to climb on its back, and you hurriedly leave. Just before arriving at Menzi's lab, you run into Lark again. Oh my gosh. Hey, thanks to you, I lost my job! That was everything I had! Tom essentially saved my life! All I wanted was to pay him back by getting him what he wanted! And I'll still do that, even if he doesn't approve of my methods. Hand over the relic! Okay. What do you mean you used it? Doesn't matter. I'll just take whatever then. This is for me and with my own Pokemon this time. And Get another back battle up, bro. with an almost all new team. He no longer has the Mon Amazal provided him and they've been replaced by others like a now higher leveled Padet as what? well as the stronger starter. But now there's also Following, Cascadian uh -oh. Trevenant. Telemac and Orbithalod. This dude team is whack. <laughs> what the hell? Yo, yeah, it's such a fire team. Yeah, beat him up. <laughs> and he's beaten. Uh, I guess it's really not meant to be. It isn't. L look, I. No, we're I not just friends. Help speed up Mr. Bezel's dreams of making the world a better, more convenient place. It's the least I can do for him. And apparently whatever that relic led to plays a big part in that. Kind of like bead. Uh, sorry. For Is he crying? And he leaves. You bring Menzi inside and when- I feel like I should feel kind of bad, but I feel no pity for Lark. <laughs> I feel no pity for Lark. No, I'm just kidding, man. I don't hate him. Okay, I kind of do, but hey, don't worry about me. And she wakes up. <laughs> She exclaims, Gee, Willikers, consider my curiosity peaked. We have to go test that flute. Since you've got nothing better to do, meet me on the Mount Anil hiking trail. She's not wrong, actually. She leaves. Later, at the trail, she's nowhere to be found. But as you ascend the mountain, you start running into Amazol contractors who battle you. Eventually, hmm. you start seeing Amazol trucks full of equipment. And finally, you see Menzi at the top, being held back by security officers. Gah, Ren, good you're here. They've taken the flute. Civil what? asset forfeiture, they said. I told them that's not how it works. 
and they just shoved paperwork in my face. <laughs> no idea how they got a warrant, but we have to stop Tom. Up ahead, you see Tom with loads of Amazol trucks and personnel around. Steel type cast forms, Amazol branded pseudo and Tom's own Orbthalod. Out of its Pokeball, as always, Tom. I feel like Orb Orbthalod has like some kind of correlation to maybe influencing their trainers to have like a darker train of thought. That's just like a kind of headcanon y theory that I have. I don't think it's true at all, but I feel like every the, the fact that every significant like I don't want to say evil, but so far morally <laughs> corrupt, I guess you could say, person has had one of them. It's it's quite interesting to me. Also interesting to note that um what's his name got one too. So I don't know how that will influence him in the future. I don't know. This Orbthalon thing, it's uh it's a little sus. It's a little sussy, bro. I'm not gonna lie. Has the flute. Yo, he hitting that though. Oh, that's if it. The flute is blown. Pause. Yo, look out! I love this mod so and much. Shortly after, Wickhoot leaps into the scene. Oh, great Wickhoot. I am Tom Bezel, CEO of Amazol. I run the operations of the humans here in this region, and I brought us all great riches and advancement. Now, on behalf of them all, I request your assistance. Coot. 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 <laughs> I don't Tom like that. <laughs> his wish to simply lengthen the seasons by a week so he can grow more profitable and more efficient crops. Coot. 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 <laughs> Bro. Coot nods and howls. Bezel turns to you and says... See, I told you no harm would need to come to them. I am an expert negotiator, even with Pokemon. It's just good business. The ground I like runs, this guy. The weather swirls. <laughs> I'm joking. And the box legendaries arrive. They are suspicious of this man and all of the other people around. So they approach Wikut. Oh, say, no. No, Bezel, I see what the hell you're about to do. You better get the damn Thunderbird out of here now. They seem to argue before eventually walking away angrily. Wikut snarfs. Snarf. Is that a no? Wikut indicates that it was indeed a no. This has been tradition since before humans even arrived here in the first place, let alone these foreign humans who've taken over. It is not up for humans to decide the fate of an entire ecosystem. The Orbthalon hmm. moves to hide behind Tom. Oh no. Unfortunate. Just know that I asked nicely. I didn't spend billions in research to be sent away by something as flimsy as tradition. And oh two no. Raise all master balls are thrown at the two of them, and they are absorbed. Wait. <clears throat> billions, you know. Research. Listen, I said two million. Uh, how about five hundred? Yeah, five hundred million. Yeah, that sounds that sounds about fair. I'm not asking for a billy. Listen, five hundred million. All I need, bro. Let me get like a like a mansion, you know, a Lamborghini, and I'm chilling. You know, I'm saying I'm, I'm so stupid. Why do I keep pausing for the dumbest things? In an ominous glow, similar looking to the mysterious mural you couldn't see, the frightened Wakut rapidly departs. Tom turns to you, walks around his Orbthalod, and says, Sometimes good business means bending some Be of your own finish. morals. I don't expect you to understand, even at your age. Now, are you here to get in my way again? No. Hmm. Well, I suppose it's time I personally challenged you. Oh, okay. And he challenges you to a double Oh, battle. damn, weather? He only has four Pokemon. The first two are Matang Trash. and Botniak. But upon defeating them... He sends out the two box legendaries. Oh, okay. And somehow they are obeying his command. Oh, okay. And upon defeat, they seem to break out of the balls and leave. Damn. Tom yells after them to his contractors, who give chase. Unfortunate. You'll see the consequences of your actions one day. Oh, damn. He straightens his tie. Even with roadblocks in our plans, we at Amazol will always come out on top. It's time for Plan C. Oh no. I should thank you, really, 
for the relic you so kindly left behind in the ruins. He gives you back the flute and leaves. Oh, thanks. And now you return to the old gym challenge plotline, meaning it's league time. The iPlay, the International Pokemon League Association, has started a big international program. For the next year or two, Elite Fours from all over the world will have been mixed. So you get to face off against amazing trainers from all around the world. How neat. In the lobby, you see Tom again. But before you can talk to him, you see the champion's assistant. Wowzers. <laughs> Sir, we have- Sorry, listen. Don't worry about me. Worry about you. But I'm single. I'm like, what? A situation. <laughs> and they walk off. You defeat the Elite Four one by one Easy. and eventually face off against the champion. Champion Zin. Who thinks he recognizes you, but isn't sure. He seems very cocky and full of himself. <laughs> After defeating five of his Pokemon, he says, All right, it's time to reveal my big new friend, brought to you by today's sponsor, Amazel. And he brings out the all new. Rogon. Omega Rogon. Yo. Isn't she beautiful? Amazol Tech is Yo. so cool and could. That thing looks so cool. I think I've already seen it before, but still, yo. Convenient and well affordable. But before you have the chance to battle it, Tom walks onto the battlefield, <laughs> apologizes for the intrusion, and says he needs Omega Rogan back now before they lose sight of them. He's carrying with him the relic and places it into Omega Rogan's back. Yo. And now it is suddenly bursting with power you can feel as your hair stands on end. Besides, denying <laughs> you a victory just gives me a kick. And like I said, Amazol always gets what it wants. Money may not be able to buy everything, but what it can't can be taken with power. Damn! What a bar! A call on your Pori watch from the professors who are together. Ren, where are you? It looks like Amazol just made some fake Thunderbird. It's clearly after Arcticol and Manadza. You're the best trainer I know. You have to do something. I got a new crab. So, you do something. The bird has flown high above the clouds to where you cannot see it, but its energy is great enough that it seems to be mind controlling all four of the box legendaries, what? and they are doing its bidding. They've slown down against their will, which will for sure mess with the ecosystem's balance and make them more easily spotted, perhaps getting them more into trouble. Now it's up to you to track them down and capture them, as it's the only way to sever the connection to the artificial Thunderbird. They also each agree to help you for the time being after you capture them, so you can use them in future battles. You seem nice Easy. enough, you just saved them. Then with all four of them caught or defeated, you see the upset bird descend onto Mount Anil to look for them. You meet at its peak and have a big boss battle with it. Ultra Necrozma tier. When dealing the finishing blow, it flies high into the sky and explodes, <laughs> sending shrapnel all over the region. Oh my gosh. The day is saved, and Tom, the honest man that he is, turns himself in to the authorities for illegal tampering with legendary Pokemon. You Wait, so we just gotta ignore the fact he just said we blew shrapnel all around the region? How many people just died? <laughs> Reface the champion and win. Easy. Becoming the new champion and the new brand ambassador of Amazon. Oh, okay. And also. So at the end of the day, we still a bag chaser. <laughs> you love to see it, bro. I just still, I just still sold the relic. I'm gonna be completely honest. So, Lucinia is your secretary. Let's go. Okay, listen. All right, it's too, it's too, it's a little loud. Uh, <laughs> I shouldn't be so loud, but listen. Yeah, <laughs> yo. <laughs> Luxon, my boy, you've done it again. You've done it again. And the following day, Tom pays his fines and gets out of jail to oh, continue okay. his plots. He asks to make amends with you and the professors, who, of course, refuse. So he stops sponsoring the champion. And Damn. That's just about as summarized as I can make a plot video. Damn. Oh, but what about that mysterious mural in the ruins? and that mysterious energy that was in the Master Balls. What about the cat And what about mm. all of the foreshadowing? Was that all for post-game stuff? Oh, you bet your butt it is. <laughs>
Let's do it, bro. Oh, I'm excited. Chapter five, the post game plot. The post game begins with another battle with Jay. Battling a champion is super cool. Thank you so much for the experience. I learned a lot. I swear I'll get that eighth badge soon and challenge you for real. As Jay leaves, Lucy approaches you and says it's time for your photo shoot. And she also tells you that there is a rumor going around that the old champion, Yazin, is gathering the exploded pieces of Omega Rogan. This is the best day of my life. Oh well, not much you can do. It's good to pick up litter anyway. You might as well keep an eye out for those pieces too. They've been scattered around the region and if you happen to pick one up, that's good. Just before the photo shoot, however, she stops you again. Hang on, Ren. We have a situation. As champion, it's your responsibility to look into things like this. As it turns out, Amazol workers are getting into a bit of a fight with a Cascadian Deonce who's damaging all sorts of property. It would seem that she doesn't approve of them building cell towers all over Mount Spectol. You do seem to remember them building a bunch of towers on either side of the mountain before. I guess they started putting them up on the mountain now too. Lucy joins yeah. you, and as you approach the mountain, she points out that it's odd how the towers get more and more densely packed together as you get closer to the mountain. Is it to help the cell signal traverse the mountain? You'd think the satellites would do that. Hmm. On the mountain, Cascadian Deonce is defeated or captured by Ren. This makes Deonce see your strength and determination, and she willfully joins you. So now you go to confront Tom about this. Clearly Deonce doesn't want these towers put on the mountain. You meet Tom in his office, his Orbthalod absent for once. He spills the beans and confidently tells you his plan. The goal? is to spread this mountain's strange soul-opening property across the region, giving Amazol access to everyone's souls and thoughts. Oh! All the better to serve them, of course. No longer will all of their data be only from web tracking, search engines, and their phones and watches picking up everything they say and do. They can truly give people what they want. They're I've never heard something more corrupted in my life. Unspoken desires. Their customer satisfaction rate will be perfect. And in return, Amazol will become the most powerful corporation on the planet. It literally oh, is. For the greater good and betterment of mankind, of course. Isn't that simply wonderful? What? No. no that's horrible. That's violating everyone's Talk privacy. Talk to him, queen. Oh, please. If our data is anything to go by, privacy is virtually worthless to you humans, willing to trade it away for just the smallest of conveniences. Facts. Human progress is entirely to make life easier. And this is that taken to the extreme. For everyone. You know, he's actually not really wrong, but I still gotta fight him, so. What do you... What do you mean, you humans? Oh. No, you've gotten me all excited. A slip of the tongue is all. And besides, what do you even plan to accomplish? <laughs> is this Tom Bezel? Or is this Orbsalon? Yo, yo, dude. Wait. Going to beat me in a Pokemon battle? The cell towers are already built. We've gotten the permits already. I own that mountain. Beating me won't stop anything. There may be occasional setbacks to our plans, as you- But Amazol is too big to fail. This is already set in motion. And besides, everything we're doing is completely legal. Okay. This is way too much knowledge and power for one corporation, let alone one person. It's not ethical. When You're have not ethical. your laws ever been concerned with ethics? When your laws, dude. <laughs> I don't like this. No bother. It's just another slip of the tongue. <laughs> Clearly, I just mean your laws often don't apply to men of my ambition. My ideas and drive are too important for civilization to be kept locked away. Deontay then breaks out of like the Pokeball and fires out a field of sorts towards Tom, revealing <laughs> his Orbthalod just behind him as Tom collapses to the floor. This Orbthalod had been controlling Tom similarly to Calyrex in the Crown Tundra. A battle begins. Orbthalot appears as the trainer and sends out Tom to battle. But it's meta stuff. Now, Tom's first move is programmed to always go first, and it also auto-defeats him with the text on screen saying, we can't attack a person, and it brings out- What? It's a funny joke. This Orbthalot is functionally a totem Orbthalot that summons unknown. Once defeated, the passed out Tom wakes up. 
totally oblivious to what's been happening the last few hours. I did what? I don't remember approving any of this construction. How would I have even known this kind of thing was possible with our technology? He passed out, Orbthalod awakens, and flees. I'm afraid it might be too late now, though. My notes here says that this scheduled activation will happen in... About 20 seconds! Oh! Deontay quickly comes out and creates an energy field around you and Lucy as a strange Zuardo? wave of energy from the mountain moves through the room as if ignoring the walls of the building and continues on through to the other side and out. Deontay keeps the field up as you and Lucy walk around. Speaking to Tom at this point gives you nothing but ellipses. Lucy says we have to get back to the mountain. And on the way, talking to any NPC gives you the same few messages. They're arriving. Redemption. Oh no! Why is your soul not open? Do you not wish to help with the gate? You know what is happening, dude? Endram Odai. After all this time, the cataclysm is finally here. Oh no! You bump into Jay, also in a daze. You ascend the mountain once more. At its peak, a portal seems to be opening, powered by everyone's open souls. The cell towers channeling the mountain's energy out to open the souls, and the soul energy back here to open the portal. From the portal, <laughs> four Mon Yo! Three of them fly off in different directions, and the remaining one floats down to you. Seeing that you are unfazed, it fights you. Yo! Finally, I'll have an Origins video for them all later. This is Pestulation. Fighting you as... Oh, is this supposed to be like the Ultra Beast take over after like, um, what is it? Frick. Oh, one of the four apocalypses. Is that what we're doing? I think so. I think so. Am I, am I wrong? I might be off, but I think y'all know what I'm thinking of. It itself seems to speak in odd symbols you can't understand. It has two Orbthalod and an Ultra Beast based on which would be best against your strongest Pokemon or just whichever is out currently, before eventually being a part of the fight itself. Defeating it causes it to bolt off, flying away, and the portal Damn. closes, returning the NPCs to normal. You now have to track down and stop them. There's no telling what their plan is. At this point, the player isn't given any direction on where they are. However, NPCs who caught glimpses of them will give hints, and there may even be evidence in the environment. It's very Bigfoot hunting-esque. Okay. One by one, you fight them, similarly to the first one, where they are functionally trainers until they themselves come out. Revelon, Leosis, and Lamentu, each causing trouble and gathering strange artifacts. One of them even finds the that middle one's called Lamentu, right? Dude, that thing looks sick. That thing looks crazy, dude. What the hell? The relic key from the exploded off Omega Rogan. After defeating all four, you get a call from Professor Fur, where he tells you that he just spoke to a Professor Kukui of the Alola region. Hey. Apparently, something very similar to what they call an ultra wormhole is being formed above the mountain again. Only this one seems much more sinister. Oh no! It doesn't seem to be from a wandering ultra beast, but something that clearly intends to come here and do something unthinkable. Kukui is mailing you some beast balls, just Let's in go. case they help. One final time, you ascend Mount Spectul. Its landscape slightly shifted, and Orbthalod and Unknown are abound. Your shipment of beast balls arrives from an Amazol Driftblim, and at the peak, the four of them are using the artifacts they've collected to seemingly power the portal back up. And Lucy says you have to capture them now, or they'll just run away and start this all over again. Hey man, let's see what let, let let's see what's in the portal. I'm interested. <laughs> and one by one, you approach and do just that. After capturing all four, the portal still hasn't closed. The artifacts are still giving off their power. So out from the portal comes what a whale of a mon. You don't know Spooky. how you know, but you recognize this Pokemon Ultra Beast thing as Endrum Odai. Oh. It screams in wailey pain and flies away into the sky. You could feel how powerful it was just by looking at it. And just looking at it is all it took to cause a massive migraine. It's We're funny because I kind of got a headache. I'll arrange a meeting, Lucy says. 
and you meet up with the professors at a Starbis. Menzi says this seems to be in line with what the ancient cataclysm was. Only problem is, now the Thunderbird is gone. No, says Yuzin, <laughs> arriving heroically into the scene, combing his hair back, carrying a sack full of broken parts. <gasps> we can rebuild it! Ayo? Yuzin has gathered many of the pieces of the artificial Thunderbird, and maybe you have too. But many of them are still missing, with no indication of where they could be. Well, I'm sure Mr. Bezel would be down to help. No way! Both professors exclaim. Uh, I mean, he's bound to have tracking installed on them. He puts tracking on everything. So you talk to Tom again. Enemy of my enemy and all that. You track down the Oh, this post game would be kind of annoying, high key, dude. Going through the region again to pick up items. I mean, I'd do it, but it would get kind of, kind of, uh, what's it called? Just a little tedious, you know what I'm saying? There's to be pieces <laughs> that you need to put it all back together, and they give it to you. Menzi mentions that the relic that gives it the extra power boost is made from the remains of the original Thunderbird and should attract Andromodai. With Omega Rogan, you track down Andromodai and force it to descend and challenge you to an ultimate battle. Nice. As it descends towards you, you feel your head pound just at the sight of it. You feel it peering into your soul, somehow with all of its eyes at once, despite not being dimensionally possible. And the battle begins. In this battle, you feel that remembering your Pokemon's names and moves is a struggle. For the player now, breaking out of the fourth wall again, all the text on screen and the sprites in the menus becomes gibberish. Yo, that's Hopefully, sick. you, the player, remember the organization of your team and their move placement. This what? is another challenging Ultra Necrozma tier fight, made harder by the menu shenanigans. But ultimately, of course, you win. Let's go! And the red face of the space whale seems to dim away. Turns out, it was a parasite controlling the creature. And now it is free from the mind control and offers itself to you to capture. Okay, cool. Or it doesn't, and it just leaves. Personally, I really like the idea of ultra-powerful legendaries not being obtainable, but I know plenty of others aren't. But anyway, the day is saved once again, thanks to the excellent efforts of Ren. Queen. Or whatever you decide to name the player. After this, it's a basic Pokemon post game. You can even find Lark again, who's been practicing battling a lot. No. He challenges you, as champion, to a super, super hard fight. His Podette's evolved into a wound. Look at him. You inspired him and he's changed his ways. Now he's a good boy. Hmm. So what do you think? Obviously You're this video is skipping over a load of locations and little story-esque events that don't directly impact the overall plot. Like most of the gym leaders and places like the Haunted House and the Crater Lake equivalent, among many others. Personally, I quite like these ideas. They could use some more polishing, but for the first big story thing I've ever written, I'd say this is pretty cool. It is. Let me know what you think down below. And while you're down there, check out noggin.net to pre-order what? Tofra. Oh. What? 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 Why did it just end? Wait, no, what happened? Hey there, we've been Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. What the hell just happened right there? Yeah, the video just ended right there. Okay, you know what? Anyways, thank you guys for watching this reaction. If you somehow made it to the end, uh, it's probably gonna be like a one, in, one hour and 15 minute video because I talked a lot throughout this, but I have to say, this region has been a journey. There, this, this is so well made. This is a beautiful, interpretation on a fan region the the pokemon they're so unique the story it's so so good that was an amazing plot i actually really enjoyed that um wow it, honestly when you really kind of crack it down there are some similarities to sword and shield's plot but it was executed in a way better way you know you have like that kind of richest guy with corrupted like you know a corrupted mentality and you know he's got the legendary all that kind of stuff dude oh this is such a good video i'm not gonna lie to him. my brain's kind of dead and i have to edit this so i can get this out by 3 p.m um thank you guys for watching i appreciate you guys sticking through this series with me in cascade it has been it's been more than the journey um and we got many more things to do on this channel so don't leave just yet i'll see you guys in the next one peace